dropped a 189 foot long Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights banner on the pedestrian path over the uh, freeway right here in Berkeley. And this is our longest banner that we have ever created. It's our biggest banner we've ever dropped. This is the exclusive And it's also the kickoff of a week of action for Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights around the world. So there are cities and countries all over the world participating, um, I guess, cities in countries all over the world because it's not like an entire nation is participating. That would be great if an entire, if an entire nation was people participating in all of its cities at once. But we have people taking action in um, cities all over the U.S. as well as in Toronto um, or in Canada and in Korea and elsewhere. So stay tuned all week long for action demanding Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights. And if you're not already familiar with Rose's Law, go to roseslaw.org and there's a new petition that's just been added there. So even if you're not before, you can sign the petition and show your support officially at your name calling for Rose's Law, which is an animal bill of rights that in its current form has five rights that are basic rights that all animals deserve to have, all species deserve to have, including, um, I'll show you, we actually have big banners here that list them all out. It's a bit hard to see though because we're right by the, the freeway, but oh yeah, you can't, can't quite see what they say, so I'll just tell you. But check out this banner. It's 189 feet long. Jenny's saying amazing. Jenny, you're amazing. Thank you for taking action for Rose's Law. I still remember when you had a an action in the, in the water, when you got a desk and you set it up with a banner for Rose's Law in a fountain, I think it was, in Canada, and you were having a press conference in the water right there in front of the government building that was very creative and I love to see the creative actions that people are doing all around the world so thank you everybody who is who's organizing for Rose's Law and everyone who's joining these actions who's following Rose's Law pages around the world on social media and sharing and supporting and like I said check out roseslaw.org to sign the new petition that's there it's not just directed to the U.S. government or any one government is something that we're asking government leaders, community leaders around the world to endorse Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights. We've already had Berkeley, where we are today, and San Francisco pass resolutions for one of the five tenets of Rose's Law, which is the right to rescue, and that's in direct response to prosecutions of activists, including myself, uh, for you know rescuing animals from exploitation, from distress, from cruelty, where in these specific cases in factory farms in Sonoma County, animals were found collapsed on their backs and unable to walk, unable to get to food and water. And when activists took them out, it launched this felony prosecution and now I'm facing eight felony charges in Sonoma County. And I'm so grateful that the governments of Berkeley and San Francisco have enacted uh, their support officially in a resolution, a right to rescue resolution. So that's something that's already happened, but for the most part, you know, Rose's Law is a very big ask and it hasn't actually happened anywhere yet. It's a long-term goal. In DXC, it's the very end point of our roadmap. We have a, a roadmap to animal liberation and the end point is Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights in the United States. And we encourage people around the world to have their own roadmaps as well in their specific regions and you can all support one another. You can roadmap. There's a lot of milestones along the way, but the end point where we're really envisioning ourselves is passing a full-on animal bill of rights that gives all animals the right to rescue from situations of distress and exploitation, the right to not be killed or exploited by humans, the right to have a protected home or habitat or ecosystem, the right to be free, not owned or have a garden. So you know, we're not saying animals should exist in, in human relationships or be part of your family because at this point animals have been domesticated, like dogs and cats and rabbits. I live with two bunnies who were rescued from slaughter. Um, I don't think that we should abolish the ability to take care of animals who have been domesticated and need our protection, but they should have a guardian who's protecting them so that they're not owned, but they are free and taken care of, right? Just like human children, just like anyone. So that's another Rose's Law Bill of Rights tenant is the right to be free, not owned, or to have a guardian. And uh, the last one I have in mind is the right to have your, your rights represented in the court of law, uh, to have your perspective matter and counted by the court, by the government. So that's something that we're fighting for with our right to rescue cases where folks like myself are being prosecuted, folks like 
Dwayne and Paul who spoke at the meetup this morning because it was their last meetup before they go to trial in Utah. Um, in the Smithfield trial that's coming up October 3rd, these are cases where we get to talk about what rights animals deserve, not just the right to be rescued, but also the right to not be exploited or killed in those situations in the first place, and also the right to be represented in court. You know, we're bringing their stories into court, even though we're the ones being prosecuted, the activists, the whistleblowers, the animal rescuers, this is a chance to tell the stories of the animals on the stand in court and to, to bring that evidence to light and to capture worldwide attention with these, these courtroom dramas that people are so invested in when they see them in the press or on social media. And so that's a huge opportunity. Um, and today we are dropping this 189 foot banner to kick off Rose of Law with action. I'll turn it around and show you again. And for folks who, who just joined us, we're out here in Berkeley and we are kicking off the week of action for people all around the world who are taking action in support of Rose's Law. Thanks to everyone who's commenting and supporting and checking out roseslaw.org where you can read these five pieces of Rose's Law that I just read and you can learn more um, about what Rose's Law is and how you can support and the actions that have happened all over the world. We've got drummers over here drumming and uh, we have some other things planned later on. Right now we're waving to everyone who's driving by, honking and supporting and uh, showing them these specific bill of rights pieces but you can't really read but they're on these signs here and maybe you can read them later on because we're going to be moving around in our protest. Uh, but I also wanted to tell you all a little bit about Rose because you might wonder why is Rose's Law and the Animal Bill of Rights called Rose's Law and who was Rose and, and why is the Bill of Rights named after her. So if you don't know, we celebrate Rose's Law Week of Action at this time of year because September 29th is the day um, that Rose
and KPFA local radio reached out and did an interview with me yesterday that's going to be on uh, the radio tonight. So that's already one press outlet that's covering the 2022 Rose's Law Week of Action and I hope that there will be powerful actions all week long that get more media attention and also that reach people on social media. So everybody who's watching and supporting, I see Crystal, I see Roman, so many people, Sheila, if you could please share the live stream. Uh, commenting is great too and all of that telling people about Rose's Law but if you could share it that would be awesome so more people see this epic banner and know that Rose's Law is something that they can they can be a part of if they're feeling like animal liberation is too far away in the future well we can bring it closer by collectively bringing it out into the, the public consciousness and talking about it. Sandra's saying fantastic work. Crystal says that's probably the biggest and best banner that Bridge has ever seen. I think that is probably true. This is a massive 189 foot long banner that took multiple people many, many, many uh, hours to paint. Um, and of course there's the tracing and the everything that goes into it before that. Um, let's see what else. Amira is saying thank you to all of you awesome activists. Thank you, Amira. I'll turn this around again and just show you all um, the folks we have down here who are drumming and leafleting as pedestrians walk by and the folks we have up here showing the uh, specific five rights that the Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights endorses and also holding up photos of Rose and others. I'll try to show you but we're pretty close to chat. Um, Keith, could you want to point, hey Keith, do you want to point that at the camera just so people can see? So that's a picture of Rose. She survived over a year after her rescue in the sanctuary with loving family and we remember her every year at this time telling her story and demanding the right to be rescued for all animals. Thanks so much. Um, and I told people that I would tell you more about Rose's story and I haven't yet. So the day that Rose was rescued, September 29th, 2018, there was a mass action at a factory farm in Sonoma County where evidence of criminal animal cruelty had been reported to the authorities and they had refused to take action. They were playing a game of hot potato where they said, someone else needs to deal with this. It should be the CDFA, it should be the USDA, it should be the Animal Control you know, Department in Sonoma County, but no one wanted to address it. They all wanted to pass it off to someone else. And so compassionate people, just like the people here today, took direct action. Over 150 people went to this facility. Some stayed on public property, some went on private property. And they walked into these sheds and they, in biosecurity gear, they looked for animals who were sick, who were suffering, who couldn't get to food and water, and they found many animals like this at this facility, which was called McCoy's Poultry Services, a subsidiary of Petaluma Poultry, and um, yeah, selling animals to Amazon, among other major corporations. And they took these animals out when they found them in this condition to get them veterinary care. There was actually a medical care tent that was set up right on the site, giving animals fluids and and trying to um, identify what was wrong with them. And of course the plan was to then bring them to get the next step of veterinary care that they needed and take them to sanctuary. But the police stopped us on site. They stalled until more police could arrive. Um, it started to rain. Animals were in activist arms, slowly dying. Some of them looked so sick, they looked like they were on death's doorstep. And we were pleased please let these animals go please let us take these animals to veterinary care we have cars right here waiting to take them we can take them today to the vet and the police wouldn't let us go it was raining people were crying it was an incredibly surreal day this is all on live stream by the way you can watch it, it you know a lot of people have watched this live stream it was like um, it was a collective moment for people all around the world who were watching it the, the powerful moment when finally one police officer said okay okay, she gave into our pleading, and she said, you can take the sickest bird out. And that was how we, we identified the sickest bird, this bird who couldn't walk, she never could walk again after her rescue. She had to be in a sling and be helped with getting food and be given individualized care. But that was Rose, and the police officer, one of them broke rank that day, literally broke their interpretation of the law to let one individual go, and that was Rose. And we told her story to the world and we said if Rose deserved to be rescued, then you know in your heart that all of them did. Then even the police who are charged with enforcing these horrible laws that protect the status quo, that put corporations like Amazon and Petaluma Poultry and Purdue above the rights of these individuals who are dying in front of us, 
you know too that it's wrong and you know what they both deserve and that's how the campaign for Rose's Law was born. Almir is directing people to turn their signs around for a photo so that's great because I want you to be able to see what these signs say. So we're turning around this way so that Rachel can see that Rachel can take photo. And then so Almira, who's speaking on the megaphone, and Rachel, who's going to be taking our photo, they are both uh, co-defendants of mine in the Sonoma County felony animal rescue case. We are facing seven to eight felony charges, each of us, for the rescue of Rose that was just described, even though the police literally said, you can take her, you can take the sickest bird out, and for two other peaceful actions at factory farms in Sonoma County. So you can see people are turning around their signs you see right to home or habitat that's one of the five pieces of Rose's Law um, I am going to ask, ask Antonelle hey Antonelle do you mind going do you want to be in the photo or do you yeah or even maybe you could just hold it and I'll go down and then you can hand it to me okay. Get down here to show you a new view as everyone turns around for the photo anyways i don't need to be in the photo i'd rather show you all these awesome signs in addition to rose and other animals from factory farms whose faces we're showing here today we also have these big colorful banners showing the right to legal representation the right to home or habitat the right to be free not owned or to have a guardian like i said the right to be rescued from situations of distress and exploitation and the right to not be killed or exploited by humans. So these are the five pieces of Rose's Law. We've got our giant, almost 200 foot long animal bill of rights banner up here, which says roseslaw.org animal bill of rights. So people who are driving by on the freeway know the URL and they know how to go find more information, get involved. Also, we have Rocky Weakling people here today too. As bikers and pedestrians are traveling by, they're grabbing leaflets, so that's great. Keeping the energy high with our drumming. in the water today who's enjoying their right to be free not owned and to be alive not killed and I think to be rescued I don't know their story exactly but yeah. um, living their best life enjoying the rights that every animal should have under Rose's law Colleen says great Cassie good job DXC thank you so much for your support Colleen thanks Shalo for commenting that news link I was just mentioning People should definitely check that out. It was a huge team effort to revamp our news page on the website and create this new format that I think is easier to um, find what you want. You can sort by blogs or news hits specifically or press releases. And um, 
You can also find top press if you want to see just some of the biggest press hits we've had recently, like this recent Harper's Magazine article that's so in-depth. So, um, run, struggle, run, fight! <laughs> I think Rachel needs to be taller for the photo, so she's going to stand up. Wilson, you want to tell people where you got your awesome shirt? Uh, the yeah, lovely like folks at DXC Korea gave this to me. They just started an animal rights center in Seoul, Korea. Uh, Seoul, is, Seoul and Korea in general is a very important chapter because, I don't know if you noticed, but Korean culture is making uh, big waves not just across Asia but across the entire world, the rise of Korean media, uh, especially like BTS and Korean uh, movies like Wong Ji Ho. But yeah, they gave it to me. They're doing some really impressive work. You guys should check it out. It's awesome. It even has this multicolored part on the sleeve. Oh yeah. This font is a font used by activist groups in the in Seoul. Uh, so it represents both LGBT uh, and oh, awesome. uh, disability rights organizations. Wow, there's so much to this shirt. Yeah. And then it has also the Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights. And that's what we're out here for today. And I know that they'll be part in the week of action later this week. Thanks, Wilson. I'm very jealous, but you know, Wilson deserves the shirt. He does a lot and he actually went all the way to Korea. I did not, so. <laughs> but that's a very awesome shirt. It's really inspiring to see people all over the world with these same sort of visuals and this united ask of these five simple rights that all animals deserve. We know that they deserve these rights, even the police and Sonoma County who let Rose be rescued knew that all these animals deserve this right. Gimli certainly knows it. He's being loud about it. <laughs> Aww. Lots of dog friends at the front here. So Almira just said, I don't know if you could hear that, but she just instructed folks how we're going to be walking back up to the bridge here where we were earlier. I started the live stream down here though because I wanted you to get a good view of roseslaw.org, Animal Bill of Rights, this amazing banner that Alex Santurio primarily made with help from Kitty and Paul and possibly others too. Um, actually, Peanut, the, the little chick who Kitty has rescued and who's spending all, all of their time with Kitty, helps. I know there are a couple of little spots where you can see little little uh, chick paw prints, uh, little three, three piece paw prints on the on the banner in white paint. <laughs> so Peanut helped too. And yeah, huge shout out to everybody who helped make the banner, who came out today, who's watching online and sharing, and who's taking action in any way to help give animals rights. All animals deserve to be happy and free, and that is a beautiful vision, an animal bill of rights 
just puts that into more concrete terms. You know, Rose's Law really just gives that a name. It gives that end goal that we're all fighting for a name. And I think it's a beautiful name because Rose was a beautiful individual and she had a beautiful story that just shows you how passionate people can be even when they're in a system that desensitizes them, even when they're literally a sergeant like this person was in Sonoma County who said, okay, you can take Rose. And if it wasn't for that act of compassion, Rose would never have been rescued. Ultimately, she never would have made it off the property. She would have been seized like the other birds that activists were trying to rescue were and taken to the animal control in Sonoma County where the other birds went and probably euthanized, which is just a, a another way of saying killed. Um, just a way that kind of tries to cover up the violence of it but she would have been murdered just like the other birds were at that um at that time after being examined by veterinarians who said that they had all these problems we've gotten the report actually from discovery in our Sonoma County case we have access to this report from the Sonoma County Animal Services that says what condition these birds were in what their gait score is which means how mobile they are it's an industry term measuring how well chickens can walk because it's just so routine in the industry for um, chickens who are bred to grow faster than they normally would, who are bred to have bigger grass and eat you know, more flesh for human consumption than they normally would. It's so hard for them to walk. Their bones, their joints, their bodies can't sustain them and so they end up collapsing on, on, from their weight. And um, that's true in a lot of farms. That was true in this farm. This is a chicken meat farm where Rose was rescued and the birds who we were trying to help were taken to the animal control animal services department in Sonoma County. They were examined by veterinarians at UC Davis and we have the reports showing that they had a bad gait score, that they had um, in some cases an empty crop, which means they hadn't had food. You know, the, the, the crop and the chicken is where the food goes and uh, they, they didn't have anything in there. They hadn't eaten there were birds with wing injuries, with hawk and joint injuries, with all kinds of injuries. And some of the dead birds that we took out were examined as well by the authorities and they found birds who had wounds so deep you could see their bone. You could see muscle and you could see all the way down to the bone. And so it's good to have on record the horrible conditions that were present at this farm. So it's not just us as activists saying it, but it's also Sonoma County's own animal services department saying it and even referring this farm as a suspect of animal cruelty to the sheriff's office, which ultimately did not go anywhere, but that happened and we have that evidence on our side. Um, but it, it's really horrible to think about what happened to those birds who were going to be rescued, who had the chance to get to medical care and be seen as individuals and not be treated like objects, but to really be given a chance to survive and thrive. Instead, they were taken to a Sonoma County Animal Services Department and inspected and determined their, their quality of life was poor, so just killed them. And I'm sure they would have done the same thing with Rose because Rose could not walk. She was permanently disabled. And even after her rescue with the best care that people could give her, people who loved her and saw her as an individual, she never was able to walk again. She was able to have joy and to have love and to eat. She ate popcorn and watched movies with her friend Zoe. She went out on adventures and hung out in the backyard at Happy Hand Animal Sanctuary and had other friends with her and got to be in the grass. But she had to be picked up and carried and brought places. She had to have a sling. She could never walk again on her own. And so I'm sure that to the Sonoma County Animal Services Department, that poor quality of life would have been grounds for euthanasia or murder. And so Rose's story is really a miraculous that instead of ending up like all the others, like all her siblings, like every other individual bird in that farm, she was rescued thanks to a police officer's compassion. She had a chance to live and she inspired a global movement as a result. And people all around the world are taking action for Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights. I just saw our friends, you can see some there, uh, arriving back on top so people have just walked back up there and they're going to continue protesting up there and i can walk up there and join them soon as well i just wanted to continue to show you the view from here of this amazing banner huge thanks to alex paul and kitty and to everybody who's watching and sharing 
I hope that more press will cover this. I hope that more people around the world will hear Rose's story and will sign and support at roseslaw.org. And even if they don't take any action like that particularly, I hope that just people driving by, seeing this sign, start to get curious. Curiosity is a great motivator as a starting point just to think more about what is an animal bill of rights? What does that mean? What's the problem that these people are trying to address and what rights do animals not have that they should have? And I mean, I think if people start to think about that, they'll realize that animals don't have a lot of rights at all right now. The animal cruelty laws in the books in California are being violated routinely by farms like McCoy's um, that were leaving chickens to starve to death without access to food or water because they couldn't walk. There were non-ambulatory birds who were not getting individualized care, which means they would not get the ability to get to food or water because they couldn't get themselves there on their own. And that kind of routine animal cruelty is, is happening all the time. We don't hear about it. We don't see it. It's behind closed doors. Um, and people might not know that, but when they see Animal Bill of Rights and when they see the, the chicken here, if you see there's the, the little logo for Rose's Law with the rose on the chicken and the hands there at the start of the banner in the middle and at the end, if people see these chickens, then you know they'll know we're not just talking about cats and dogs, but that we're talking about other animals who have even fewer rights, not that cats and dogs even have these basic rights. You know, the rights of Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights that we're talking about are things like the right to a home or habitat, a protected home or habitat. And so many dogs and cats are houseless, just like so many humans are, and they don't have their, their space being protected, they're being abused, um, they're being neglected, they're being deprived of their space. Rights to have their interests represented in the court of law. You know, dogs and cats and other animals who are companion animals, their rights are really only brought into the court when it's because of the human. Like, if you stole some other human's companion animal, then you could be found guilty for that. You could be brought to court for that for stealing property, even though we know that animals aren't property, but that's still the way that that gets brought to court. It's not in the interest of wouldn't see a court case where a dog who was kidnapped, um, you know, gets to be given a reward or whatever in civil court over that, or where a dog who was abused by a human, even if that human gets prosecuted, you wouldn't see that that dog is getting anything out of it or that their story in court is being told from their, their perspective of their rights being violated. It's not, it's really about property. And uh, that's a huge shift that we're trying to bring about where the way that we think about animals, the way that we uh, you know, envision their role in society, in the environment, in planet Earth, is coming from the perspective of what they need and what they deserve. And that's what Rose's Law is about. It's about putting ourselves in the view of Rose and other animals like her and seeing what do they need what do they deserve? And I think that, that that one of the five is really important. It's not always the one people think about the most, but giving them right to representation. You know, it's hard for us to think what that even means. It's like, okay, right to not be killed. I get that one. That's easy to understand. Um, right to a home or habitat. I can understand that. We need to you know, protect the elk in Point Reyes and stop turning all of their natural habitat into ranches for, for cow farming, right? Like, their home, their habitat is being destroyed and turned into ranching and that's degrading the land and I can totally you know, wrap my head around what it means, what it would look like to give that land back to them. But, and, and these are all really big asks and hard to envision, but I think having rights, rep, having the right to representation in court might be the hardest for me to envision because I've been in some trials, I've been in court for myself and for other cases, civil trial. Um, and that environment is just so callous and so cold to animals, including humans, but definitely animals who don't have rights on the books, who aren't being represented in the court. It's hard to envision what that would even look like when the way that they're talked about is as property. And the way that they're talked about is their dollar value. You know, the, in the meetup this morning, Paul and Wayne were talking about their upcoming case 
Smithfield trial in Utah, which starts October 3rd, so very soon. And Wayne was just sharing that the the papers that they've read from the FBI agents and others involved on the case who are putting the evidence together against them, it says that the value of these piglets was $84, is what we said this morning. $84. Which, you know, it makes the point it's so ridiculous that the FBI and all these taxpayer dollars are getting involved and in going into prosecuting these peaceful people who allegedly stole property worth only $84. Like, that's a joke. Why is that such a big deal that the FBI needs to get involved? But also, besides the ridiculous uh, level of reaction from the government, it's also just heartbreaking that the life of Lily and the life of Lizzie of these two piglets who are rescued from Smithfield is valued at only $84. That's their role in the Smithfield trial right now, if you listen to the prosecution. Their only role is not, it's not to tell a story that inspires people, it's not to talk about their rights and what was done to them. In fact, the judge has ruled that we're not even allowed to show evidence of inhumane animal conditions at the Smithfield farm. We can't bring that up, we can't show it. He doesn't want that to be on trial. He doesn't want Smithfield to be on trial. He just wants this to be an open and shut theft case. <sighs> but to value their lives at $84 and to relegate them just to property and just to the status of the object that was stolen rather than giving their rights any, any amount of importance in this case, hard to picture what things would look like if we did them differently in court. But I hope that we're going to get there through these court cases that we have and through actions like this one today. I'm back up on the bridge now. I'm behind the giant banner. And people are sticking their signs up here on this side. there's going to be some smoke flares up here as well so stay tuned for that if you're watching and you walked away from your phone or your computer then come back and check out the awesome visual that we're going to have in a moment and if you have any questions about Rosa's Law please let me know or check out rosaslaw.org for more information Rohin says, Kathy, your videos on DXC, like the ones on pearls, milk, etc., were so impactful. Please continue creating more of that content. I am definitely working on that, Rohin, and I will try to keep producing them until I can't think of any other things to make videos about. <laughs> I have one about eggs that will be coming out next week, so stay tuned for that product review of eggs. And I also see Amira asking where to get a Rose's Law t-shirt. I'm not actually sure what the link is. I think um, it may not be accurate on the Rose's Law website. Like the newest link might not be there. But I think there is a way to buy them. And Paul would know that. I can ask Paul about that. The, the number one place that folks have gotten these shirts is from the Animal Liberation Conference. Like if you see from the back here this shirt that says liberation for all with the logo for the animal liberation conference and rose's law that's where those shirts were given out to attendees at the, the conference um, this is another one that chris has on that's just in a different color what so that's black chris can i show people your shirt So that's the Animal Liberation Conference shirt and we use the same logo as Rose's Law minus the rose in the actual body of the head. And here's another different version too that um, Tonya has that lists out the Animal Bill of Rights on the back. Fan says 
has great audio and visual. I'm glad that you think so because it is pretty windy up here. <laughs> but really seems quite small in comparison to the almost 200 foot long massive banner that we have going on on this side, all the way across the bridge. And we have a drone videographer getting footage as well. Michelle's on drone today, so we should have great footage for the media later, thanks to that. And also, Amira, we're planning to do the uh, classic Animal Liberation Conference in the Bay Area next year. So if you're interested in attending, we don't have exact dates or venues for it yet, and we will be announcing them later this year. But if you'd like to get a shirt and also join us all here and then take action with hundreds of people together, which is definitely the bigger point, not just the shirt, although the shirts are epic then stay tuned for that and you can also always find that information at liberationconference.com or animalliberationconference.com which is they go to the same site. all right we've got some smoke flares oh i thought you read bit about who Rose was since you probably know her the best, um, knew her the best of anyone here. Yeah, um, well Rose, she lived at my animal sanctuary, Happy Hen Animal Sanctuary, after, Emily really likes Rocky and he sees Rocky over there not petting him and he's very upset about it. Um, but yeah, so after Rose was rescued from McCoy's factory farm, she came to live at Happy Head Animal Sanctuary. Um, the very first night she was at Sanctuary, she was really scared and she was crying. And um, when, you know, she was in my bedroom so I could keep an eye on her just because she was really sick and I wanted to make sure she'd be okay through the night. Um, and she, when I turned the light out to go to bed, she just started crying. Um, and so I kept trying to figure out what was wrong and why she was so upset. And eventually, um, I realized, you know, she's used to being with so many other chickens because she grew up on a factory farm. She's never been alone before. Um, so I wrapped her up in a blanket and I put her in my bed and uh, cuddled with her. Hey, and for what's the first up, everybody? Time, 
she so stopped can I, crying. Can anybody she was please so come happy. over here? Um, can you move? Yeah. To this so then big she banner. and I just we really bonded. The big red roses she really became banner. like a best friend uh, to me. I'm gonna sing a um, dance for you guys. And she was just so, a really awesome well, and yeah. strong individual. So ready for my there's a dance happening now, but yeah. So that's yeah. Just, a little intro to who Rose was. this side if you're over here. Okay. And another thing. So. So hopefully you can hear Zoe okay. Let me know if you can't hear too well. People have said the audio is good. But we are up on the freeway. And walked a little bit away. So a little bit higher. But Zoe was saying that Rose, who was the head, inspired the campaign for Rose's Law Animal Bill of Rights. You know, the first night that she spent at Happy Hand sanctuary with Zoe she was scared and she just didn't want to go yeah. to sleep and she was making noise and Zoe kept checking on her and then she realized that she had probably just never been alone before and felt scared to be alone which makes sense I don't know I didn't think about it because the environment inside a factory farm that is so crowded and you, know, you have to compete for food and water and it's loud and noisy and scary it just seems like the kind of thing that you would be grateful to get out of and find peace but also if it's all you've ever known you know, being alone all of a sudden um, makes sense that that would just be something that you're not used to that would scare you. So um, I'm really glad that Zoe was there. And Zoe knows chickens so well, and she's been taking care of chickens since she was 11 at the sanctuary that she founded with her mom. So um, totally could tell something was wrong and knows how to help, and that's amazing. And we need more awesome caretakers like Zoe uh, so that we can help give all these animals the right to be free, not owned. And, all the domesticated animals who need to be freed and rescued and taken out of this system. If we're going to rescue them, we need to have places for them to go. We need to have people who know them and understand them and are willing to take care of them. So, you know, we have to shut this industry down, transition away, not breed animals into the world to be exploited and killed by people in the first place. But for animals who are in that situation right now that we can rescue, we need to try to do our best to give them the rights that they deserve including a guardian who can take care of them. So, yeah, I think we'll wrap up on that note, and I'll just say one more time, thanks to everybody who joined us out here on this beautiful day in Berkeley. Um, we're reaching a lot of people driving by, but we can reach even more people on live stream if a lot of you all share it. So if you haven't yet, please share the live stream. 